comes to the test. Perfect. They're recording their voices in Wiradjuri, a language they've been learning since they started school. I really like doing the classes and learning Wiradjuri with all of my friends and the games that we do. It's really cool to be able to speak another language. The recordings will be part of an exhibition by artist Jonathan. He chose kids from the town of Parks to be a part of it because all kids here grew up learning and speaking Wiradjuri as part of their regular lessons. It just so happened that the word, the Wiradjuri word for remember is one of the hardest words ever. <laughs> 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 <It is. laughs> the finished exhibition will actually be in Sydney and it's mostly about a building that no longer exists. See, back in 1882, fire destroyed a building called the Garden Palace. It held Aboriginal objects dating back to first contact with Europeans, but they were all lost in the fire. Jonathan wanted a way to celebrate and remember that lost history. So he made this. It includes 15,000 white shields laid out over 20,000 square metres. And inside, sounds and phrases are played from eight Aboriginal languages. Phrases these guys lent their voices to in Wiradjuri. Now they're travelling all the way to Sydney to see and hear their finished work. You'd probably hear somebody say, oh, that's me. It'd probably be both of us. I think it was really exciting because not many people get to do this. It's like more once in a lifetime experience. After walking around and getting to experience it, these guys are blown away. It was amazing seeing what we helped produce Black. So with all the words that we um, said, recorded, um, seeing how differently it sounded when we were in there to the house sounds now. They say they've now learnt how important it is to remember the past and make sure it lives on in new ways. Be proud because I made a difference in the world. Hello everyone. Hi, my name's Jonathan Jones. And I'm Rachel Brown. Um, and uh, so you, you just watched that um, small segment on a project I was lucky enough to work on last year called Barungal Jara. Um, and today uh, we're going to look at a, a project that I guess um, speaks to some of those ideas that we looked at in, the, in, in that project. Um, and so hopefully by now everyone um, received their notes to get um, an image of a building um, from their town, an important building that they um, connect with. This is actually, um, I'm going to take you through step by step to how to do this little artwork. Um, but hopefully you all found a building that was really <coughs> special and important to you. As you heard um, in that project Barangal Jara, the Garden Palace was actually a really important building for Sydney. It was a really important building for Aboriginal people because all of our objects were collect collected in that building. And um, so what we're going to try and do is start thinking about these special buildings in our communities. And I've picked this building because I grew up with my nan up in a little place called Baraba. 
Um, and this is the church. And so I literally lived on the other side of the road. Um, so I um, sort of grew up with this church. Um, so I thought that this was a really important building for me to look at today with you guys. So now that hopefully you've all got your building. Yep. And you've got your, um, your, your, uh, your printout ready to go. We might ask them to move to their desks. Do you want to, um, maybe everyone should move to their desks. Sorry, I, um, I, I didn't follow that. So do you all want to move to your desks um, and get your image ready to go and we'll start working? So everyone should, um, we maybe give you a minute just to sit down. And actually teach as well, um, if we can ask you guys to remember to please take a photograph of um, one or more of your students' artwork, so only one image, and send it to the web link that has just appeared up on the screen at the end of the lesson. Obviously not now. And we'll put that up a few more times just so that you can remember. Mm -hmm. Right, we might start cutting. How's everyone going? Is everyone, um, hopefully everyone's sitting at their desk. Hopefully everyone's got their image um, and some scissors. And so what we need to do is we're going to actually make a stencil out of this building. Um, and so a stencil is just basically cutting out that shape and then using that shape to make your artwork. Um, so what I want everyone to do is to just carefully, carefully go around the edge of the building, just cutting out the sky, cutting out the ground, cutting out everything around the, around the building, but just holding on to the shape of the building. So with this church and some of the other buildings that you probably have, I'm probably talking too loud, um, you'll have little features. So like especially with the church, there's always a little cross on the roof or the little points. Try and make sure you hold on to those um, little designs because they're of course what people really recognise those buildings for. Um, and when we go to make the artwork off them, that's what people will um, kind of understand. So Jonathan, while everyone's cutting out their buildings, we might have a look at some um, recent works that you have made, if that's okay. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so this process of working with um, <coughs> important buildings is something that I've been um, sort of exploring on a couple of projects. Um, and in fact, uh, I've, I've got these images here for you. These are actually really old, old newspapers. Um, so, so these are newspapers from the 1800s, so from your great-great-grandparents' days, um, maybe even before. Um, and what I've done, you can see, is I've actually cut little sections out of these buildings. So this is actually an old image of um, a bank in Young. So some of you who are from Young, I picked this image because I knew some of you are from Young. Hopefully someone might recognise this building. Um, and then the next one, this is again uh, a church over in Young, and you can see that I've just cut that building out. So I've just sat there, um, and this is a really old newspaper. I've cut the building out and um, inserted underneath um, these designs. So these are really special designs that Radjuri people and Gamilaroi people, people from all around the southeast, New South Wales and Victoria, would make these designs. Um, I know there's some of you from Gundagai, so some of you might recognise this old bridge um, over the river at Gundagai. Um, and you can see I've cut the river out there, um, just to show that image. Um, the next one is from Dubbo. So this is again the old bridge at Dubbo. Some of you probably recognise um, that bridge and the river running through. So this is from 1879. So it's just a really old newspaper and cutting out those um, cutting out that river and putting those designs back in. Um, the next one is again Dubbo. From, this one's from 1874. Um, that's the main street. The next one is this someone will, hopefully some of you guys from Albury will recognise this one. Um, this is the train station down at Albury. 
Um, and this is from 1883. And then... This one here is in fact um, the town hall. So hopefully everyone can recognize this one from Aubrey. Um, and this is from 1881. So again, just a really old newspaper and doing what we're doing now, just slowly cutting out those buildings. You can see that I've kept the flag there. Um, I've kept the design of the building. So there's those little turrets and things that you'll be able to recognize. Um, and so that's really important. Um, you'll also notice with all these works that I've tried to keep you know the details in so you can see the people there the horse and carriage um, and just remove the building and so that's what we're trying to do today try to keep that detail um, this next one was a full page I think it was out of a, a really old newspaper called the Australian Sketcher um, and it takes you from Juni and I know there's some some students from Juni here um, all the way down to Narandra um, so some of you might recognize some of that country as well um, and then the last two, these are from uh, Wagga Wagga. Um, so this is from 1880. Again, just looking at how we can use those buildings, the different designs that um, we can work with those buildings. Um, and then the next one is um, uh, the sports grounds down in Wagga Wagga as well. So these are just some ideas of what you can do with images. So this is just collecting images from um, old newspapers from online like we're doing and being able to use them in different ways to make your artwork. So hopefully um, by now you guys all have, um, hopefully by now you guys all have, oh I should do this one, um, your little building cut out. So this is that little church I was showing you before. Um, and I've just cut it out, I've cut out the, the grounds, I've cut out the sky. It was really hard for me to cut the, the cross so perfectly, so I just kept a little, almost like a diamond shape up there. And so what I want us to do now is take your piece of paper um, and with some um, blue tack on the back of your, on the back of, on the back of your artwork, so just some tiny little um, bits of blue tack, really small, small bits off your stick of blue tack, so just pull tiny little um, bits of blue tack off and then put those on the back of your artwork because these are going to hold your artwork down while you're working with it. Um, so you've got your blue tack on the back um, or it could stick on your finger. There we go. And then just think about where you want your artwork to go. Um, you know, you might want it to go right on the bottom of the ground like that. Um, you might want it to go right in the middle of the artwork. Um, because we're going to create a stencil around this image, it might be good to give it as much space as you can. So maybe in the centre or, you know, maybe with, with a work like this, you could do it a little bit further down so you have a lot of sky in the artwork. And so then just push that work down. So just push it on so it doesn't move. So now you can work with that image and it's not going to move around. Um, you can bump it or someone can accidentally bump you and you're not going to lose your spot. You're going to hold that position perfectly and that's what you want with a stencil. Um, a lot of people usually tape their stencils down and that creates the sort of, you know, so just so it doesn't move. Now what I want us to do, and I noticed that some of you would have noticed that when we watched that small segment on that project Barunguljara, we actually mark the outline of the building with those shields. And so what we're doing today, we, we're not using shields, but we're going to use um, our, like a, a thumb, a fingerprint. Um, and so now that you've got your image stuck down, just take one finger um, and put it in the, the ink pads that you guys have been provided. Um, you might just have to test it a few times. So, so sometimes when those ink pads are really fresh, um, you get a bit too much ink on your finger. But what we need to do is slowly start building up these images. So just mark all the way around the artwork. Just slowly marking out the building. And this, you should start seeing, what you want to do is, sometimes you can get too much ink on your finger and you'll just make like a big black spot. So sometimes you can get two presses 
or sometimes three. And on that third one, you can probably see that you can see the design of your fingerprint coming through. And that design's really important because it starts to talk about your relationship with this building. It starts to talk about how you're connected to these places. Um, and so slowly just start building up your image. Um, so Jonathan, when you're um, putting your fingerprint down, are you um, going onto part of your image or are you on the paper completely with your finger? Yeah, you need to do, like, because you really want a strong edge, because that strong edge is what's going to give you a really good image um, and give you a good design and so people understand your artwork. So really make sure, really make sure that the edge of your artwork's um, getting covered and making a really sharp line and then, slow, then we'll start slowly working out. Um, and also try and make sure you're moving your finger around so you're not getting the same, the fingerprint in the same way. And would you use one colour or would you use a few different colours, Jonathan? I know you guys have a few different colours. Everyone's different. <coughs> you can use um, a couple of different colours. Just maybe think about that colour combination. You know, sometimes you want to make sure that they complement each other. Um, or sometimes you might just want to work with one, 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 one colour. I know some of you were, maybe we were talking about the idea of all these artworks coming together at the end of the day so that they yeah. all make your town, you know, that they talk about important buildings or places in your, in, your, um, in your town. And so maybe if you're doing that, you might want to think about them all coming together. So also be really conscious about how the artwork will work as kind of one image, if you like. But what we need to do and yeah just when when they're really fresh just make sure you get enough of that fingerprint design coming through and you are changing the direction of your finger all the time I can see yeah try and, and uh, of course we're lucky that we've actually pinned <coughs> the artwork down you can spin it around you can change the direction um, you know and get different just so your fingerprint's not going in the same pattern all the time, because that's probably, you know, just not as, not as interesting as being able to move it around. Some of you would have seen on that little film that we watched, we, um, when we put the shields down, we put them down in all different directions. And I guess um, in one way it almost looks like the way leaves fall on the ground. So, you know, when a tree has kind of dropped all its leaves, especially around now in winter, um, you'll see that there's like a, a really heavy pattern of all those leaves really close to the tree. But as you move away from the tree, those leaves slowly break up. And that's the kind of idea that we're trying to go for here. So a really intense pattern or really intense right around the actual building. Um, and then as you move away from the building, just sort of, um, you know, letting it sort of just slowly fade out. Um, so that's kind of the, the look you're going for. And Jonathan, would you always use the same finger or can we use different fingers? I'm using, you get really sore. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, um, you, can, you can actually get really sore on this finger, so just be careful. But I reckon just using one finger is probably good um, because you want, you want some clean fingers to make sure you can look after your artwork. Um, okay. And you don't want to get, um, especially just keep it onto one hand if you're going to do that, if you're going to use more than one. But always try and keep one hand free so you've got, um, so you don't mark or damage your artwork with your other fingers. And um, while we wait for everyone to finish off their printing with their fingers, um, could we talk about um, maybe some of your shield? Yeah, 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 yeah. Work, so. So um, I was really keen to show you guys um, some of these shields. So these are broad <laughs> shields, um, and they're from the southeast. So again, so New South Wales um, and Victoria. And these shields that we made, so um, all Aboriginal people from around this region made these types of shields. And they're called broad shields because they're really wide. Um, but on the face of those shields, artists would carve designs. Um, and so carving and carving these linear designs is really, really important for the southeast, for especially for Radjuri and Camilleroy <coughs> people um, and all the people that make up that Murray-Darling Basin. This is, the, this is the type of work that, you know, that we were always practicing. You know, when people think about Aboriginal art, they sometimes think about 
dot paintings or they sometimes think about cross hatching and and those sort of designs come from different areas they you know dot paintings come from central australia and cross art um, bark works they actually come from the northern part of australia so here in the southeast um, where we're all from you know for this new south wales and victoria what we would do is make those beautiful shields and so we'd carve those shields and carve really lovely lines on them and I think there's a second, I can show you a second design as well and you can see here these really intricate designs um, and so hopefully you might start recognising some of these designs these are the designs I was doing um, in some of those works on paper that we looked at before um, those lineal designs that I was putting underneath those buildings into those rivers and reimagining those designs back on our country. Um, and so, Jonathan, you look like you've oh. pretty much almost finished. Uh, what? Yep. Nearly. Yeah. When you have finished um, putting down all your fingerprints, what would be the next step? So once you're happy with your building and how much you've done around it, um, if you want to, um, some of you might want to go a lot uh, with a lot more fingerprints. Um, some of you might want to fill the whole page, you know, um, or some of you might just want to be really sparing. You might want to think about really underneath the building. If you go a little bit heavier underneath the building, that will kind of make the building feel like it's sitting on the ground. Um, and up the top where the clouds and the sky, you might want to sort of make it just really lighter. So you get that sense of moving away from the building. Um, but once you're ready with it, what you can do is you just slowly peel that blue tack away. And you're not using the, ha the hand that you did your printing with, are you? I'm trying to keep that finger away from everything now. Um, and you just pull that away and then you get that image. So something like that is what you're looking for. Um, so we've gone from that image of the building and just thinking about um, the shape around that building. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> I can't fit the, this is like, there we go, a little bit better. Um, and so you should get something like those sort of designs happening within your work. Um, and I guess what we're thinking about with this is that buildings are important. You know, buildings are, you know, bricks, they're windows, they're concrete, they're a roof. But what makes buildings important are all the memories and all the ways that you've engaged with them and people before you have engaged with them. It's about the history of those buildings. And so these images are talking about people's relationships to space. So I guess um, while we wait for everyone to finish their artworks, um, Teachers, if you can remember, again, if you do have students who've finished artworks already, um, to email it to the web link shown on the screen, down the bottom, that side, that side, that side. <laughs> <laughs> um, then that would be helpful, but remember only one image per school. So whether that's a group image of lots of artworks or one particular artwork, um, we, as soon as we receive them, we can um, show them off to everybody. Um, but while we do wait for you all to catch up and finish that off, um, we might go to um, a quick film. So if you've finished your artwork, you can just watch the film, or if you need to finish off your artwork, you can keep printing away um, while you watch this film. Within this, for this project and for this element of the project is the, the garden palace just after the fire where the bulk of the building was built out of wood but the turrets and the foundations were actually built When we look at the material that was lost in the Garden Palace, it was mainly communities from the southeast. And when we say southeast, it's really New South Wales, Victoria, the kind of Murray-Darling and coastal regions. And the objects that we were making 
we weren't able to continue those practices. And so when we lost those objects, it was an enormous kind of cultural genocide that occurred. One of the amazing things that people do from this region is make shields, mainly from the sort of major sort of big red gums that were along the rivers um, that sort of really dominate this region. People would um, cut out their shields from, from the bark um, and pull them out and then create these really significant shields. And, each community had their own way of making those shields. Sydney, for instance, had beautiful ellipses. Other parts of the region had different tip designs and different ways of working. So those shields are very culturally distinctive. You can see one of those shields anywhere in the world and you'll know it's from here, um, from the southeast. So they're really important to us. And a lot of those shields were lost in the fire. And so we've taken that notion of a shield on as the sort of major kind of cultural icon for the project. But in addition to that, we also know that those shields were in fact part of ceremonies here that happened on site. Probably around the world, we know that there's probably only about a thousand historical shields left. And so they become really significant um, kind of visual metaphors for understanding um, the kind of cultural loss that happened. And what we're um, working on is we're creating 15,000 shields. And so those shields will then be scattered around the entire footprint of the building, marking the footprint of the building. And one of the um, images that we refer to um, within this, for this project and for this element of the project is the, the garden palace just after the fire, where the bulk of the building was built out of wood but the turrets and the foundations were actually built from bricks. Um, and when the fire went through, the fire sort of exploded those brick sections out. And you see the scattering of, of, and there's something about that notion of rubble within the landscape. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed that video. I'm just wondering if um, Miss Jackson's class from Dubbo North, I hope I've got that right, have a question for us um, or for Jonathan. And if you do, can I ask you to please unmute and ask us that question now because we do have a little bit of time um, for some question and answers with Jonathan. So, Dubbo, did you hear us? Oh, yes! yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you are. Um, <laughs> um, this was Manuana, what was your question, big boy? What was your first artwork? Oh, wow, what was my first artwork? God, that's a really hard question. Um, I can't remember. I think... Um, my first artwork. I think uh, my first big like work that I exhibited in an exhibition, like in a gallery, I in fact made an artwork that was a um, a midden. So some some of you might know what a midden is. It's a midden's like where um, an Aboriginal camp used to be or is, and it's a build up of all the kind of things that people were eating. So. Um, for some people living by the river, um, <coughs> uh, middens were like just big shell deposits, so like a big heap of mussel shells where people were having a big feed. And so one of the very earliest works I did was like collected tin cans, like Coke cans and, um, and, and kind of all those aluminium cans. I chopped them up and folded them into the shape of a shell. And then I just made a big pile of, of those. So that was my very first artwork. but. Um, that went into an exhibition. So it's a really hard question to remember. So you guys should all try and make a note now while you're doing your first artworks, what was your first artwork so you can remember it for when someone asks you in a long time from now. Thank you. Um, can you guys please mute again if that's possible? And can you, who, hand up who has a question and we can, we can find you on the screen. What, any schools have a question for Jonathan? Yes, that's Dubbo North have a question. Is that right? No. And that one did, Dubbo, Dubbo, Dubbo Public School. Sorry, Dubbo Public School. Just a minute. When were you inspired? 
inspired by Aboriginal artwork? Were you inspired by Aboriginal artwork? Yeah, yeah, so um, so we didn't get to um, <coughs> say that. So my nan was um, Radri and her husband was Camilla Roy. So um, when I start making most of my works, I try and think of, you know, talking to that history and those ideas. Um, and so, you know, the, the when we looked at that um, installation in Sydney, that work was about, you know, those objects that were collected from, you know, our communities um, and they were put in that building and they were destroyed. So, you know, that, that's, that, that's um, talking about those Aboriginal stories. Um, and, and I think what we're doing here, you know, with these artworks, thinking about, um, I think what we're doing with these works, um, we're thinking about country, we're thinking about places in our communities that are important to us. And we're talking about our local communities and our, our own local environment, and that's really important. And that's something that Aboriginal people do all the time in our in our artworks. We're always talking about um, our country, where we come from, and why that's important, and the memories connected to that place. So, although I guess a lot of people probably wouldn't say that this is an Aboriginal artwork because they don't recognise it, I, I would say that you know um, that it's talking to those Aboriginal ideas. Thank you, everyone at Dubbo. Um, do we have a question from Juni North? If you guys can yes. unmute. Hello. I'll be going. How long did it take to make Barangal die? Oh, so that exhibition, Barangal Jara, and how long did it take to make? Ah, oh, well, it was a really long project. It was maybe two years two years that we were in full-time mode of working, but the project I'd been working with for a, a long time, the idea of how to talk about um, and how to rep represent something, and this is you know something for you guys to think about, how do you represent something that's not around anymore? How do you talk about a memory? How do you draw a memory? Um, you know, and again, like I think these artworks that we're making today start to think about that. This is a, you know, in a way it's almost like a drawing of a memory. Um, so these are some of the challenges, but I was really lucky that, um, as you saw on that film, I do a lot of my work with um, Uncle Stan Grant. Some of you probably know Uncle Stan um, and all the language work that he's done for Wiradjuri people um, and teaching us our language. And within that language, you know, there is these stories that we can connect with. Um, so I've been working with him for years and years now. Um, and then before that as well, I found out about the museum and those objects being destroyed in the fire. I think I found out about that almost 20 years ago. So I've been thinking about that artwork for a really long time. All right, thanks Junie. Um, does anyone else, would anyone else like to ask Jonathan a question before we... Finley, is, do, does Finley have their hand up? Yes. Can you guys unmute? Yes, please. Um, what's your favourite artwork? Oh, wow. Oh, gosh, that's really hard. Um, so I know you guys have been doing some... I know you guys have been doing some work um, before looking at some other, some other Aboriginal artists from the southeast. Um, I think one of the artists that you might know is an artist called Tommy McRae. Yeah. Um, and Tommy McRae is one of the artists in the home education kit. Um, and Tommy McRae, I have to say, he was working in the 1800s. He was doing these extraordinary artworks, um, and they're probably my favourite thing. So that's a really good question. Thank you, G um, Finley. Does anyone else just put your hand up so we can see you if you have a question? That is Wellington Public. Can you un? Hello. Is it Wellington? <laughs> Why did we use the shields for the outliners for the, for the, for the, for the, for the Yeah, right. Why did I use them? Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a, yeah, I guess. So the question is why did we choose to use shields to represent the outside of the border? And I guess what, what I was trying to talk about was that um, shields are really important for the southeast. You know, um, shields have those designs on them. And as I was saying to you guys before, in the southeast, those designs are really, really, really important for us. They are the designs that 
our ancestors did, they're the art traditions that we have inherited. You know, um, those line designs, those chevrons, those circles, um, the intersecting um, uh, uh, lines that sort of make up the surface of those shields, that's something that's really important for this region. So I wanted to talk about those um, and talk about the loss of knowledge that we have around them. Um, and in a strange way, you know, that's what we're looking at here. With every one of those little fingerprints, we've got those line designs that are from our finger. Um, and so those designs on the shields have these lines um, and they talk about the individual artists that made those. So they're really important. They talk about our ancestors, they talk about our knowledge, and they talk about our culture. So that, that's why I wanted to, to use them, because they really represent those cultural ideas that are important for us in the southeast. Um, so, we have one artwork so far, um, and I'm wondering if we can have some more, because I can see quite a few of you look like you might have almost finished. Um, so, we'll have a few more questions while we get those final artworks either sent via SMS to that mobile number, or you can upload them direct to that link that's on the screen. Um, so we'll put the mobile number back up in a minute and or you can have the link. So um, if there's a school that haven't asked a question yet, can you please put your all your hands up so we can see you? And we will go to oh. you. Oh, who's that? There's Bunning Yong. Bunning Yong, can you please unmute and ask your question to Jonathan? No. Bunning Young? We can't hear you. We can come back to Bunning Young. But let's go to is it what? Mm. Ah, there we no, go. There you go. It's not. Is it on? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we can hear can you now. Can you hear us? Yeah, we can now. Oh, okay, great. Thank goodness. Sorry. Sorry. Right. How long did it take you to place the Ah, oh, that was really hard. That was a really hard job. Um, it was it was almost two weeks. Um, and what was really difficult was we didn't really know how to do the maths. Sorry, and so for everyone who didn't hear the question, I'll just repeat it. How long did it take for us to put all the shields around the garden palace? Um, and it took us, yeah, it took us the best part of two weeks. And the really hard part was we didn't know how many we had. So when we got to the end, <laughs> we did one layer of shields, but we looked around and we still had 2,000 shields to go. So we ended up having to take those 2,000 shields and then slowly sort of put them through the rest of the shields that we'd already had. So um, yeah, it was about two weeks. We were really lucky that we, um, some of you who might have seen those images, it's right on Macquarie Street. and so. There's all these buildings up on the other side of Macquarie Street. And so a lot of those um, people <coughs> that we, they came down from their office. They came down and asked us what we were up to and we told them and they got really into it and they started texting us images from their office. So some people from right up high on level 30 were sending us photos of what we were doing and they actually helped us with the artwork because every time we wanted to make sure it was looking right or that the density was the right level of density and that it faded away at the right amount. Because not like these artworks, you can't see, you couldn't see what was going on. Um, it was all just on the ground. So we needed help from above. So we were really lucky to have those people getting involved. Thanks, Bunny Young. Um, I think Tamora have a question, Jonathan, for you. Tamora, if you want to unmute. Ella, big voice. How, how often do you use the shield for your artwork? Like, is it How often do I get to do artworks? That's a really, really good question. Um, I, I'm an artist and Sadly, I don't get to do enough artworks all the time. You spend a lot of time, like all <laughs> jobs, you probably spend more time um, doing emails and meetings and all that sort of stuff. But, um, but that stuff's really important because you'd sort of need time to make sure, because those projects like the Garden Palace, you know, took lots of work. We ended up working, like as the, the story told you, we worked with eight different language groups from across the southeast. 
working on the botanical gardens. We had to coordinate all those shields being made. We had to coordinate the grass being grown. We had, I think there were so many people involved in that project. The project was so much talking, so much negotiating, so much um, getting to know everyone and making sure everyone was doing their jobs. And then only at the very end did the artwork sort of come together. So the making artwork is sometimes not as much as you'd like it to be. Have we had a question yet from Yarong Creek? Is there another question? No. Here? Can we have a question from Yarong Creek, if you can unmute? Do you always use black ink in your artworks? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Maybe uh, not always, but probably a lot. I think, um, I guess with these works, what was interesting was that really trying to get that really dramatic effect. So that idea of really making sure that we can get the um, that image showing off the, off the piece of paper really, really clearly. Um, and some of you guys will probably want to experiment with this if you do this artwork again or, or keep working with them. Because, you know, technically we haven't actually drawn anything. Technically we haven't actually, um, you know, made any marks, any solid marks. We're just building something up. And so when you're building something up with layers and layers and layers, sometimes it helps to have that really contrasting colour. So this is something you guys will probably get to play with or experiment with within your own work, is just to sort of what colours really pop. Um, you, you know, you might even want to choose, um, some, of you, we, some of you might want to choose a different colour background, um, and that changes things again. So, you, you know, just think about those colours um, and what they mean. Is there another question, maybe? From if your school has a question, put your hand up. Lots of questions, that's good. Um, who hasn't asked a question and does have a question? Um, Finley, have we heard from Finley before? Yes, okay. We've. We can probably have one more question. Finley, if you would like to unmute. Um, what's the longest time it takes to make a new to complete the artwork? Ah, yeah, I think that project, um, so the question was how, how long is it, what's the longest time it's taken me to complete an artwork? Um, and I think that Barangal Jara project in, at the Botanic Gardens was very, like, was the biggest project I've ever done. Um, as I said, it was two years of like really full-time work. It involved working with all those different language groups, getting um, language from right across the region, um, working with the people growing the grass, um, getting the shields made, putting them on site, um, and everything sort of coming together. That was, was a really, really big project. Um, so, so yeah, that was probably the biggest thing I've ever done. Um. Jonathan, I think if I'm right, Tamora and Gundagai South, you guys haven't asked a question yet, have you? Ah. No. Okay, so can we have Gundagai South please to unmute? Okay. Because technically you can't use your work to complete the artwork. So when did you first start your career? Oh. So when did I first start my career? Um, so I was lucky, I I am um, went to university so I guess I started the only thing I was really good at um, at school was making art like doing things so um, I, e I ended up being lucky enough to go to a, a university so sometimes with the universities um, even if you're not very good at your studies um, they accept you based on your artworks um, and so I was really lucky that there was a special Aboriginal program where they sat me down and they looked at the fact that I wasn't very good um, academically, like with my reading and writing, um, but they looked at the artworks that I'd made and um, we talked about them and I remember it was kind of embarrassing because I think you were meant to bring, they said bring in examples of your artwork um, and I thought that they meant like the real examples. So I dragged in all these like sculptures that I'd made and dumped them and it took me almost like me and some a friend to try and pull them all out and put them in the space and they were just like 
We actually just wanted photos. Um, and you sit down and you talk about them. And based on that, they said, yeah, look, you should be able to come in. We're going to support you and help you with your academic stuff. Um, but based on those artworks, you, you, you can come to uni. So I think that was really the kind of moment that I sort of, my career started, if you like. Um, and I started doing shows then, showing my artwork, um, and you know, doing workshops around my artwork and stuff. So that was, you know, all these sort of things are really important part of being an artist. And uh, thank you very much. Do we have a question from Tamora? If you're ready to ask a question, perhaps just unmute your microphone. We we did have a question before. Ours was the question about. Um, whether Jonathan got to do his artwork very often. Ah, okay. Yeah, so it isn't it isn't always easy to keep your art practices up, but um, as like, but always practicing. And I'm sure every one of you have an uncle or an auntie or someone in your family who makes something. Um, and so someone's always, you know, out the back tinkering away, doing something. And that's really important, I think. You know, even if you don't get to do it all the time. Just making sure that you're spending a little bit of time um, doing your favourite thing um, is the best way to sort of keep involved with it. So I recommend all of you to try and spend whatever it is. It might not be art, might not be your favourite thing, but whatever your favourite thing is, just always do a little bit of a little bit of it as much as you can. Thanks, Jonathan, for taking time to answer everyone's questions. So I think you all look like you have pretty much finished. Franklin, have you not had a question yet at all? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, what influenced you to do art? What influenced you to what, do art? Ah, what influenced me to do art was the question. Gosh, that's a really hard question. Um, I think when I, I think just as I was saying, maybe the only thing that sort of really influenced me was that it was what I enjoyed. It was something I was really good at um, and it was something that I enjoyed doing and um, I think that's really important for whatever you guys want to do. You've got to really like what you're doing um, and then you can really get into it. So. If you find whatever it is you really like to do, um, and as I said, it might not be art, it could be something else, but you know, whatever you're really passionate about, that's what you should aim for. Um, and so that's what I did. Um, and I'm really lucky now that I get to do artworks all the time. All right, so hand up, really big hands up, who has finished and has already asked a question to Jonathan? Everyone, looks like everyone's finished and everyone's asked their question. So I have one final question for Jonathan. Jonathan, is this the first time you have ever made an artwork virtually with school kids or have you done this before? You know, I've never done this before either. So um, I'm really happy and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys have done. Um, and seeing all the different spaces that you think are really important to you um, and that are really important to your local um, town or, or where you come from. So, yeah. All right. So, what we are going to do in a moment is we're going to put up onto our screen photos of everybody's of the artworks that have been sent in. So, I think we've got almost everybody's so far. Um, when we put the image up of the artwork, if that's from your school, maybe just jump around and do a big wave to us and we'll call out the school name. So this uh -huh. artwork is from Dubbo Public. Jump up and down Dubbo. Yay, well done. That's what? really good. Do you recognise that building, Jonathan? I don't recognise that <laughs> building. <laughs> but no, that's amazing. That's really good because like, I think, every, and hopefully every, everyone can see this, so we can really see that really dense line. So you can, and you can see all the details in the roof and everything and the, 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 the chimney as well. And that's, I think that's what, you know, when you're mm. a local person to those communities, you should be able to recognise some of these spaces. So that's great. Well done. And whose is this one? 
Jump up and down if it's your school's. Dubbo. Is it Wellington. North? Is it Wellington's? I think it yeah. might be Wellington's artwork. Oh, well North? done, Wellington. Ah, oh, okay. Everyone's connecting to this building. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a great, like a shop front, like those old shop fronts with those really round turrets on the top. Next one. And who belongs to this artwork? Yeron Creek. There they are. Very excited. We can see you jumping up and down. Well done. <laughs> That's great. They sort of look like feathers on a parrot. I know. And this one, Franklin. Oh, it has to be Franklin. You guys are going crazy. Well done. I like that cutting. That's a really beautiful church, yeah. That's a really tall um, tower. And next one. Oh. Oh. Who owns that artwork? Is that the garden? That must be the garden palace. Yeah, Bunny Yong. I think I recognise that building. <laughs> well done, Bunny Young. We're going to need to cut back to that to put new ones on. Oh, okay. And oh, one more. Sorry. Oh, one more. Who belongs to this artwork? What school is that from? Caitlin. Caitlin, where are you? From, from tomorrow. Oh, from tomorrow. hello. Yes, yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah, that's great. There you go. So, I mean, what's really interesting <coughs> about those buildings, and this is this idea that we were talking to you about before, that you can represent something without it being there, you know? And that's, that's something that you've all done really well. So without even not seeing those buildings, um, the detail of those buildings, we're not knowing what they are, but we can see the shape of them and we can start recognising them. And that's, um, that's really fantastic. I think we have um, maybe a couple more just being uploaded right now. So... Tell them to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> um, did, e did everyone, can I ask, hand up if you all did the same building in your class? No one. I was a couple of people, yeah. You're in Creek. Okay, and hand up if you did, uh, all did different buildings. Oh, great. Okay, great. Also, yeah, maybe some of those ones that have done all the, the group buildings, like all different ones, you could try and put them all together. Um, and maybe working as a class, you can actually start mapping out the town um, and putting them in the right order or east to west, north to south, um, or just trying to understand how your town's laid out. Yeah, definitely. And when you, when your teacher or when you have had a chance to do that, if you can, um, if your teacher can send us a photo on Edmodo so we can show it to everyone, that would be great because we would love to see um, a, coll a collaboration between the classes and your town. And your town. So I think we've got uh, maybe two more. There we go. Oh wow! Who owns this one? Junie, is it Junie? Yep. Junie North, well Junie, done. Junie, what is it? <laughs> Do you want to unmute and tell us what it is, Junie? Yeah. No, no. A I, roundhouse. A roundhouse. Oh. It's, it's the roundhouse. Oh, great. Roundhouse Museum. Roundhouse Museum. Ah. You're right. I thought it was so like... It was for it, it's for um, train repair and Junie is a railway town. That's right. I thought it might have been some licorice. Because <laughs> licorice comes from Junie. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Junie. Do we have one more, I think? Yeah, yeah we have. Just, just oh, we have a few more. Okay, awesome. We're just waiting for them to be uploaded. Um, while we're doing that, Jonathan, so you went to uni and did art at uni. Was there, did you leave uni and then become an artist straight away or did you have to do lots of other jobs? Oh, uh, I was really, really lucky. I, at university, I started showing some <laughs> artworks um, in exhibitions, mm -hmm. um, which was great. And so 
Then I started working for an organization, an Aboriginal organization called Bumali Aboriginal Artists Cooperative, um, which is like a, a group of urban artists um, with a collective here in Sydney um, who run a gallery and, you know, work together to show their work. Um, yeah, and then from there just started becoming an artist. And if you were um, a young person in primary school and you wanted to become an artist, what, what advice would you give um, the students today? Mm, maybe. You guys are really lucky um, that you can jump online and look at so much stuff. You know, you can jump online and look at artists talking. Um, so you can go onto all the films and listen to people describing their artwork. Mm -hmm. um, you can hear people talking about different things and ideas that they've done from right around the world. Um, and so you guys should really kind of have a look at all those things because those hearing other artists talk is really inspiring. I think that's, that's yeah. what really kind of motivates you. Um, and you don't have to read books anymore. Like um, when, I, when I was going to school, you can actually just listen to people telling you their story and being really passionate about what they're mm -hmm. interested in. Mm -hmm. So much easier than reading a book. You can just watch YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we have um, maybe four or five more artworks. Oh, Here's wow. one. Who owns that? Oh, that is Ginny. Again, thank you, Ginny. That's great. Wonderful. And the next one. Oh, wow. Who owns that artwork? Jump up and down. Finley. Finley. Thanks, Finley. Oh, wow. And who owns this one? Oh, all Finley. Okay, awesome. That's more from great. Finley. Oh, beautiful. I wonder where that's. Is that Finley again? That looks like maybe a town hall as well, hey, with that round roof. Oh, no, that's the that's Garden Palace. That's the Garden Palace. I recognise it. See? <laughs> that's the Garden Palace. Well done, Finley. Thank you. Oh, oh wow. Awesome. That's fantastic. Who's that? Who wants to put their hands up? Who's, who's, who's works that? <laughs> Who is it from? Gundagai. It's from Gundagai. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, is that the dog on the tucker box? It is. That's it amazing. Is oh, that's oh. <laughs> How do we not get that? <laughs> that's great. <laughs> awesome. And I love, oh, that one's amazing. I think that might be the last one. Who owns that artwork? Wellington. Thanks, Wellington. I like the drips going down on that one. Yeah. So if we don't have any more um, artworks to go, I just want to say thank you, everyone. Thanks, boys and girls, for joining in and um, making an artwork along with Jonathan. And I, of course, want to say a big, big, big thank you to Jonathan Sorry. for spending your time with us and helping us all to create amazing artworks today. No worries. Hopefully everyone will look at their town in a totally different way and start thinking about their buildings. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Bye. See you later. Thanks everyone. Go away you. <laughs> Someone knew they were a dream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>